Hey everyone, James here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most transformational mindset shifts I made on this journey of quitting gaming, and that is all about addictive personalities and why they don't exist. You see, for years, I always blamed my gaming addiction on me having an addictive personality. I mean, it's, it's what everyone does. It's what you convince yourself of after you try so many times, you just think, I'm destined to fail. I'm not meant to have a life without gaming. It's just not who I am. I have an addictive personality. But as you'll find in this video, that simply isn't the case. Because ultimately, an addictive personality or addictive personality is the result. It's not the cause. So when we think about a gaming addict, what do they look like? I can picture one in my head because I just think about who I was a few years ago. I was kind of depressed, I was socially reclusive, and I didn't go outside, I was unhealthy, sleep. I stayed up late and didn't sleep, I was um, kind of greasy and dirty and I ate junk food, I didn't exercise, and it's pretty easy to conjure up an idea of what a gaming addict looks like. And when people look at gaming addicts, they tend to always say the same thing. So, like, oh, why don't you just play less video games? Why don't you go get a job or take up new hobbies or just moderate it and play at the weekends? But none of these seem to work. And if you haven't already, go and check out my video on why it's impossible to moderate video games. If you haven't already, it's, it's packed full of information. I highly recommend it. But these things that people say about gaming addicts, gaming is one of those few addictions where people say these things. Similar to alcohol. If you know people that have quit alcohol or you've done it yourself, suddenly you get bombarded with questions about why aren't you drinking or just have one, it's okay. But when people say these questions, they're always putting the blame on the addict, on you. When in reality, they should be putting it on the games. Because you see, gaming is designed to be addictive. It's a highly controlled, highly developed, marketed, targeted substance that has been designed in such a way so intricately and meticulously thought over and perfected over years to keep you hooked, to keep you addicted and to keep you trapped in the game and playing non-stop. But why is it always the blame of the person? Why is it always the addict's fault? Why is it always on them to regulate their gaming? What happens if we think about it from the perspective of, say, a meth addict? If they want to quit, you don't say, oh, you, you are the problem, you just have an addictive personality. It's the meth, <laughs> obviously. Similarly with smoking, people don't say you have a smoking disorder. They say, yeah, cigarettes are addictive and you need to stop. And they congratulate you for stopping. But when it comes to something like gaming or alcohol, which there's so much societal conditioning around gaming, so many cultural biases that, again, I'll get into it in another video, but it's kind of convinced you, it's kind of convinced your brain that you are the problem because that's what everyone thinks. They don't stop for a minute to consider whether it's the games that are causing it. And as I said earlier, an addictive personality doesn't cause an addiction. What happens is that over time you get addicted to something and as a result you develop an addictive personality. You develop a dependency on the substance, in this case gaming, or it could be alcohol or cigarettes. Whether that happens gradually or whether it happens in one big jump, the truth is that the people who have addictive personalities don't have an addictive personality, they're just addicted to something. But we convince ourselves that we've got this incurable in we've got this incurable untreatable disorder this personality that will never go away that's been born into us or molded into us over years of conditioning from our family and our genetics cuz i used to say the same thing my dad and my people in my family have had issues with these kind of things in the past and i just thought yeah it's genetics <laughs> it's not a sign of the times or is not that they were just getting addicted to something whether it was cigarettes or drugs or alcohol i just thought it was them and i thought i was destined to have an addictive personality too but 
once I realize that that's not the case, that, that I'm completely in control of, let's call it what it is, a disease, that's when things started to change. That's when I had that big mindset shift that I've been talking about, that I talk about in my videos, that's caused me to quit gaming for the last time effortlessly, without motivation, without willpower, without all the traditional things you need to do. I've just given up because I stopped seeing the problem as something internal. The problem is no longer with me. The problem is with the substance. And once you can fully internalize that, once you can make it clear to yourself, to your brain, that gaming is the problem, gaming is causing these issues, and the gaming is the root of all the difficulties and the stress and anxiety and cravings and everything. It's, it's the cause of all of that. And once you can get that mindset fully realized, then you can make that shift and that transformation into a new life without video games. And it's something that I wish everyone can experience. I feel alive. I feel energetic and vibrant and motivated, passionate, productive, everything. I wake up with the desire to fulfill my mission, my destiny, which I had never felt before. Honestly, I've had moments of motivation, moments of clarity, but nothing like this until I was able to release myself from the chains, the shackles that gaming had over me. I wasn't able to make this change. And it all started with that shift in mindset. And if you need more help, let me know down below, leave a question, a comment, something else, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But until next time, thanks for watching. See you next video.